Today, we put the age-old question to the test. Who would win? A giant billion-dollar games publisher or a cheeky little exploiter? Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, YouTube's tea-drinking extraordinaire. Our battleground for today is Mad Games Tycoon 2. The game is effectively an advanced version of Game Dev Tycoon, when all aspects from game development and publishing are represented and fleshed out. You can buy out other developers. Heck, you can even sell merchandise to your fans. The sky the limit. Now I like a good challenge ladies and gentlemen. So today in this game entirely about developing games I'm going to not make a single game. That's right I'm taking the entire core concept of this game and yeeting it out of the bloody window. So let's see if I can still win. So grab yourself a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea and if you're truly a majestic sausage then like this video. Let's dive in today. Welcome ladies and gentlemen it is the 1st of January of 2020 and you join me in the wonderful Big Gazza's Game Studio. Studios, based in the glorious and sunny Skegness. Now this is a company run by one individual, Big Gazza. Now Big Gazza, he's not a game developer, he doesn't know how to make games and so consequently he's not even going to try. He is however a very smart con artist and using his incredibly smart brain power we're going to do some very cheeky things. We're going to steal other people's games and then we're going to scam the world. So first things first we need to build a little research rooms so that Big Gazza can come up with all of the biggest ideas. We then put Put Gaza into the room and then we're going to have Gaza research production. That cost us 5 million, which is an astonishing quantity of money, but don't worry, it'll all be fine. I'll also hire an employee to help out Big Gaza, it's none other than his mate, Alan. So Alan and Gaza are setting about going to work researching how we can actually produce games. Now by produce, I don't mean actually develop them, I mean physically print copies of them, because at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you actually make games, all that matters is that you can sell them. Now who is our competition today? Well, it's actually 100 other publishers and developers. There are 100 different companies out there all competing with us. You might recognize some of the big hitters like Nintendo and Minisoft and even Pony. These companies are worth a stupendous amount of money. In order to buy out Nintendo we would need 1.2 billion but they're the exact company we're after. Why you may ask? Well many many moons ago I made a fantastic Animal Crossing exploit video and they copyright struck the entire thing into the ground and when I tried to argue that actually this is completely fine they didn't care. So consequently, Big Gaza's goal today is to buy and destroy Nintendo. Alright, so a few months later we've managed to research production, which means I've built our production center, which is very, very important. This is in fact the most important room in our entire offices, followed only by the marketing department, or as I like to call it, the Ministry of Lies. The Ministry of Lies has one very important job, generate as much hype as humanly possible. And that's exactly what we're going to manage today. Now of course, as I said, we're not going to make our own games, which means we don't need a development studio, we don't need a graphic studio, or any of that. Fact. Instead, we're going to be relying on other companies to do all of the actual work. So, for example, we've received our first publishing offer. Basically, this game developer, Kencom, has themselves a game. It's called Super Gear, and they need someone to actually publish it. They will sell us their game for a quantity of money, and then we will give them, say, 22% of the profits, which is what I will offer them. They think this is a fine deal, so we're bam. I will give them 9 million, and my job is quite simply to sell digital copies of this game. For each copy we sell, I make $30 of profit. Profit. So we're bam, very cool indeed. What we then want to do is set our release window. Now we're going to set it for 20 weeks in the future, and the reasoning is very simple. The further into the future we go, the easier it is for me to drum up hype for this game. And hype is the most important thing out there. So we're going to start with our first hype campaign, advertising using game magazines. So away my lovely marketing department go as they spread sweet little lies and promises about super gear. What's this? My employees are complaining that there aren't enough toilets? Look, I don't care. Yeah, just stop. We on the floor outside, please. Jeez. These employees. Anyway, so we've generated some hype. Hype is up to 20, but we could do a lot better. So we're going to start another advertising campaign, this time using the radio. It costs us 50 grand to do it, but don't worry, it should definitely make more money than it costs. With that complete, we can now start our next marketing campaign, which is going to be none other than internet ads. That's right. We're going to convince the folks on the internet to buy our game, and this should raise our lovely hype from 35 to even higher. Ooh, and we get to go to a games convention. Now we're going to spend 680,000 on a large booth. You might think this is a terrible idea because we only have one game to show off at this giant booth, but it doesn't matter, it makes us fans. And guess what fans do? They buy your games. And so just like that, our hype is now up to a wonderful 80 and we should be ready and set for the game to actually release. Now will this game turn a profit? I have no idea, but there's only one way to find out and that's to wait for the game to release. Ladies and gents, Big Gazza has an offer for his army of fans. 
That's right, the first 10,000 people to like this video get early access to the re-release of the hit classic, The British Empire. You all asked for it and Big Gazza's gonna make it happen. And best of all, you can decide which country we invade to kickstart a thousand years of torment in the comment section. Oh, I hope it's France. Right back to making games. Right, and so the time has come. Our game releases next week as the game of Super Gear. Now, we have spent effectively 10.8 million on this game and we should maybe make some of that back. I mean, the game hasn't done great, let's be honest. Uh, kind of mixed and middling reviews, but as long as we sell enough copies, all is good. Now, because it's a digital release as well, we don't even need our production machines to do their job, but that's fine, don't worry. Largely, we're just releasing this to gain some fans, because the best way to gain fans is to release products and fans. Oh, these bad boys will buy anything you make, and trust me, we're going to make a lot of rubbish. Right, so now that we actually have the game out and released, you'll notice it has some reviews. For example, this game has 1,000 1,300 positive and 600 negative reviews. So what we're going to do is a little bit of special marketing. Yes, that's right. We're going to spend 10,000 to um, potentially manipulate that number just in our favor. Now there is a chance this backfires and we lose some fans, but don't worry, we've got a lot of fans to spare. So wabam, our work is complete. We've managed to hopefully fake some reviews and tomorrow we'll see how successful it was. It was very successful. 1,300 positive reviews and nobody noticed that it was a scam. Lovely. Those positive reviews, of course, naturally feed back into more sales. Now here's the thing with game development. You could release a game and there's a chance it makes money, there's a chance it's absolutely terrible, but what if there was a way to guarantee that every time you released a product it was a 10 out of 10 smash hit? That would be absurdly powerful indeed, and luckily for some reason this game allows us to do that. By stacking some completely broken and horrific modifiers, we're going to cheese the universe today. And this is how we're going to do it ladies and gentlemen, with IP trading. Effect Effectively, IP trading allows us to buy games. Now, some of these games had success and some of them failed. For example, Sky Raider Heroes here. It was a perfectly average game and it managed to make its developers 3 million in profit. However, because it only sold 400,000 copies, it's not exactly a very valuable IP. So they're going to sell it on the market for 23,000. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy the IP for Sky Raider Hero, this game that was kind of a middling success. And then what I'm going to do is wait enough time for it to eventually fall off the market and and then what we're going to do is we're going to resell it. That's right, we're going to take an existing product, slap a lick of paint on it, and make a stupendous amount of money. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our lovely Big Gazza's Game Studios. Big Gazza himself is about to be on the precipice of making a lot of money. For a start, the game that we bought the publishing rights to has made us 2.4 million, which is very, very nice indeed. That's a tidy little bit of profit. But where our real profit comes in is the fact that I decided to buy an additional IP, and oh, you know what, I'll buy a third IP. So effectively, I've bought two IP IPs for 77,000 and then an additional IP that I bought for 20,000. So for example, let's start with Defcore. Defcore is a game that managed to sell 2 million copies and what we've done is we've bought the rights to this game for 77,000, allowing us to redistribute it as we see fit with a 75% discount. So what we're going to do is release Defcore Platinum Edition and we're going to sell it for $15 and we're going to start its sale in 6 weeks time. Lovely stuff. Literally all I need to do to make a profit is to make more than 7 77,000 on this game, and then wabam, we've made a lot of money. Now, I will spend quite a bit of money marketing it, but trust me, marketing definitely pays off, because immediately on our first day, we already sold 6,500 units. Ah, wabam, we've already made 75,000 profit, very, very good indeed, but now that our marketing has kicked in, that's going to increase even more. And now it's time for special marketing. Yes, let's fake those user reviews, baby. What could go wrong? So yes, all of our employees and Big Gazza himself are writing up a bunch of lies about this game. Game. Did anyone notice? No, no one noticed. That's 13,000 positive reviews that just appeared out of thin air. Lovely stuff. So yes, now that we've done all of that work, we've set this game up for success. And what I'm now going to do is repeat this process with some of the other IPs we bought. Sky Raider Hero Platinum Edition is about to release, and we're just going to release it next week. Right, next up, we've got a few more budget games to release, so it's time to release Return Super Fire Platinum. This is a game that I also managed to buy for 70,000, so we will just immediately release it next week, and hopefully people will like what they see. Wabam, first day rolls around, immediately 3,000 units sold. Very, very good indeed. Oh my goodness, now that's what I call profit, baby. Look at that. Right, are there any other more IPs that I can buy? Yes, Spider Armageddon and Big City. Two IPs, both worth 200,000 each. Don't mind picking them up because chances are I can make enough money back. I mean, look, we spent 20,000 on Sky Raider Hero and it's made 400,000 already. That is absurd. All I did was just release it again. But ladies and gentlemen, 
and this might seem like a lot of money, but this isn't anything yet. We haven't even gotten into the true side of this exploit. It's very shortly, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be making a lot more money than this. Right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We have 31 million in the bank, which means we are ready to do some very, very silly things. Effectively, we're going to make a lot of money. Now, all of the games that we released as budget games that we just decided to purchase, that's very good indeed. But what we can now do is we can re-release the games that we re-released as budget games as bundles. That's right, we can take Big City Platinum, Land of Secrets, Spider Armageddon, Return Superfire, and my personal favorite, Sky Raider Hero, and whack it all into a bundle. And we can call it Gaz's Splurge Bundle 5000. Now, this is brilliant, because effectively what we're going to do is resell existing games, and we're going to charge a lot of money for it. $120, and you can get all of these lovely products. And we're going to wait 20 weeks for the Gaz's Splurge Bundle to actually come out. So anyway, it's time for a marketing campaign, as we're going to advertise Gaz's Splurge Bundle, and we're going to spend a lot of money advertising it very, very nicely. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, the lovely Gaza Splurge Bundle releases, and look at that! Day one, seven million dollars of profit. That's right, this bundle just sold 192,000 units on its first day of release, and we haven't even finished our final marketing campaign. Second week, we've made 12 million. Very, very nice indeed. Remember, we bought the five IPs included in this bundle for, at a maximum, 70,000 each. And as you can imagine, we've received a pretty tidy return on our investment. Oh my goodness, this is absurd. Absolutely absurd. So naturally, we're just going to be repeating it and using our lovely profits to buy even more IPs off of the market. Then we go over to the budget game section and we release them all as classics. The other advantage we have is the more games we release, the more fans we're going to get. So as you can imagine, we're going to be getting a lot of fans. Now we are currently making about 18 million per month off of revenue sales, which is just absurd, truly fantastic. Turns out buying all of these IPs was a very, very good idea indeed. Effectively, all of them are turning very tidy profits, and that's exactly what we want to see. Now what I'll do is I'll buy even more IPs and I'll return to you once I'm ready to release our next wave of bundles. Right, and here we have it, only six years into the game, we've managed to sell five million units of Gaza's Splurge Bundle 5000. This nearly brings our total profit made from this one product up to an absurd 200 million, which is just wild, absolutely wild. So of course, in the background, we've set up uh, Gaza's Gamers Free and Gaza's Gamers Bundle 2. These are going to be some lovely products that we're going to hopefully be shifting on the market as well. The more and more of these that we sell, generally speaking, the better. And here we are, just three weeks away from the release of two simultaneously massive game bundles. This is going to get very, very silly indeed. Now, in order to actually buy and set up these bundles, of course, we've spent about a million on marketing, and including the IP costs, it probably means we've averaged out about 1.5 million at maximum per each of these bundles. So provided they can make more than 1.5 million, we've turned a profit. Oh, and well, Gaza's Gamers Free has managed to sell 11 million in profit on its first day. Oh, and look, I've gained some company rating. Very, very good. Oh, we can finally visit a large booth. Right, let us advertise Gaza's Gamers Free. We can also advertise Gaza's original Splurge Bundle 5000. Despite the fact that it's probably going to get pulled off of the market soon, uh, why not just give it one last hurrah, one last demo? It's only been on the market for like 90 weeks and it's made us 208 million in profit. Look at that. 46,000 in development costs. That's how much those IPs cost us. Oh, and look, Gaza's Gamers has already received a golden record. One million units sold. Lovely stuff indeed. This can only go up, baby. Right, welcome back, ladies and gentles, Gazes and Gamers. We have made 500 million in profit, which is very good. The Gazes Gamers Free Bundle has sold um, quite a lot of units, 6.5 million to be precise, and so I think we're ready to release our next bundle. This is going to be some amazing hits. A few of these games in here actually cost us 200,000 to buy the licenses of, which is, you know, that's how you know it's a premium bundle. So this is going to be Gazza's premium stuff. Oh yes, this is all of the top shelf kind of goods. We're going to spend 20 weeks on this and you know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to market this game into oblivion. Away we go. Gazza's lovely stuff is going to become legendary, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The Gazza's Gamers Bundle 2 has finally been taken off the market after 89 weeks on sale. It managed to make 13 million dollars in profit, which was very good considering it cost us basically nothing to put together. At the same time, Gaza's Gamers Free is about to go off the market as well, having sold 7 million units and making us almost 300 million in profit.
profit, but next week something brilliant happens. Gaza's premium stuff hits the market. What is in Gaza's premium stuff? Well, we're about to find out. Oh, lovely, look at that. Gaza's game is freeze off the market. Gaza's premium now enters, and we get $13 million worth of profit on the first day. That's very good. At the same time, it's time for us to do a little fake special marketing campaign. Let's fake some user reviews for our hit classic, Gaza's premium stuff. Go, marketing department, go! Ah, Gaza's premium stuff has already received a golden record. Very nice. Let's see if anyone notices our fakery. No one's noticed it was a scam. Lovely. Glorious success. Our reviews will now fly. Alright, so once again, I will just continue waiting until Gaza's premium stuff eventually comes off of the market. Although, as you can see, that bundle and all of our residual games that we're selling is really starting to make us a stupendous amount of money per month. If we look at our owned IPs, we have quite the collection forming. And one thing we're now also able to do is release Game of the Year editions of a game. What is a Game of the Year edition? Is it anything fancy? No, it's just the existing game you know, but with a brand new label attached to it. So we're going to release this bad boy in 12 weeks time and stick our marketing department to it to make some money. Now here's the thing, I think I'm able to actually fake user reviews for this Game of the Year edition because technically the game did want to release and it has 135,000 positive reviews. So no one will notice if, you know, it's not actually on the market, but we just add a few more. Yep, no one noticed we added 136,000 positive reviews. <laughs> and there we go, our Game of the Year edition is released and already it is making money. But we mustn't lose sight of our goal of buying and destroying the entirety of Nintendo. We're just a few hundred million away from being able to buy out the company, but soon we'll manage it. And when we do, all of their expensive IPs will be ours. And after an astonishing 92 weeks on sale, Gaza's premium stuff has finally come off the market, making a tidy profit of 263 million. Right, ladies and gentlemen, 10 years into the game, the great bundle apocalypse is upon us. I've created four bundles. The Chad bundle, comprised of all of our top selling, reselling games. The Chud bundle of all of the next best games. The Chaff bundle of a bunch of chaff. And finally, the C bundle, which is just a bundle of nonsense. For some reason, ahead of release, both the Chaff bundle and the Chad bundle are very much ahead in terms of pre orders. But who knows what's going to happen? Because next week, we're about to make a lot of money. As you can see, we've got 868,000 in the bank, and we're running at a net loss of 5 million, apparently, because I've bought a bunch of items. But no, we've just made a stupendous amount of money. Yep, we've just made 43 million in game revenues just from these bundles. Lovely stuff. And they're going to continue to make money. Oh, yes, the sky's the limit, ladies and gentlemen. Already, they're just selling hundreds of thousands of copies each day. Oh, this is going to skyrocket us towards Nintendo. Very good indeed. And best of all, we're about to head into Christmas time. You know what happens at Christmas? That's when little Timmy goes up to his parents and says, hey, can you buy me the Chad bundle or the Chaff bundle? Because it's the greatest value bundle ever. And guess what? Two of our bundles have already received golden records. We've crossed the one billion dollar threshold. Oh my goodness, this is it. This is the end game, Nintendo. You only have 1.4 billion in the bank. I'm 400 million away from taking you out. Right, let's buy up some more IPs. And Christmas has hit, which means game sales are going up. The Chud bundle just received the golden record, and the C bundle isn't too far behind. I can't believe that the C bundle has made 34 million in profit, considering it is literally made up of a bunch of games that hardly turned a revenue of over 60,000. But hey, it doesn't matter. Money's money. Just like the UK government, I'm not going to ask where it came from. And I'm going to do another marketing campaign for our lovely Chaff bundle. Just get that hype up to maximum. Sell a few more copies. There we go. Lovely stuff. And you know what? Let's do some special marketing. Chaff bundle. Let's fake some user reviews. Nothing could go wrong. Oh, okay. It did go wrong. 62,000 fans got upset and have, uh, have decided to leave us. Well, it doesn't damage the game sales, so it basically doesn't matter. All right, Chad bundle. You can have some fake reviews then instead. Lovely. That was a glorious success. Right. Just to throw us over the line, I'm going to release a bundle uh, in, let's say, four weeks' time. There we go. It's not going to be a good bundle. It's just called Yi. It's a bunch of random games I have lying around, but I might as well. Yi bundle, I'm sorry, there's not much I can do for you in the way of marketing, so uh, good luck getting yeeted into the world. Fly, my pretty. Become famous off of your own feet. Although, actually, we might hit 1.4 million before Yi even releases. All right, there we go. It releases, and well, bam, it made 2.9 million just because we had games lying around. And that throws us over the 1.4 billion mark in terms of profit, which is exactly what we should need, which puts us only a few million away from buying. Nintendo. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. 1.424 billion is certainly more than we actually need to buy out Nintendo. So over here we go. Ah, oh, look at them. Japanese. They hate us. 
They have a huge amount of market strength. They have so many famous IPs. Some of their IPs have made 500 million in revenue, which is obscene. And what I'm going to do is just buy the company. So, well, bam, by buying them, all of their consoles have just been ripped off of the market. Oh, yes, lovely stuff. Nintendo, you are no more. Now, when I look at my company, I can view my subsidiaries and see Nintendo. And what can I do with this company? Well, I can first buy all of their IPs and steal them. Then I will close the company down. And then I can use their existing IPs to release Game of the Year editions. These Game of the Year editions will sell for fantastic quantities of profit. Thank you, Nintendo, for this perfectly balanced experience. Ah, lovely. We've just robbed the Japanese, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I finish today's video, I actually have a plot twist for you. You see, this is the second time I've recorded this video. For you see, I originally wanted to do this in a multiplayer game with Connor Brow playing as a pro gamer and me as an exploiter just to see whose skills were more powerful. Just one issue, it all went wrong. And whilst it didn't fit the main channel, it was so funny we turned it into a members video. So if you're a patron or a channel member giving us one dollar, then you can watch me losing my mind at my intern and support the channel in the process. Right, back to the usual outro. With that, I think Big Gazza has proved his point. You don't need to actually make games to become a world-class game developer. You just need to find a way to convince someone to buy something they already own. And the best way, of course, to do it is bundle it all together so that you artificially raise the value. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a wonderful and perfectly balanced look into Mad Games Tycoon 2. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like. If you want to see me break more video games, then hop on down to the comment section and tell me what you'd like to see next. Make sure, of course, to be subscribed so that way you know when we release a video. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our lovely majestic sausages who make up our YouTube channel members and Patreons. Their generous funding makes all of these videos all the more possible. So thank you very much. And if you're sad though wondering what to watch next, look no further than this video on screen now, chosen by myself to be lovely for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a glorious day and goodbye for now.